I've been short of time lately, and rather than focus on time-intensive games, I've been trying Feed the Deep, an Aussie-developed horror roguelike from Luke Musket, the guy who brought you Fruit Ninja. Feed the Deep is a pretty interesting little game. Like Dave the Diver meets Lovecraftian horror, Basically, there's some humongous squid monster in the depths that's so big it could come to the surface and end all the floating cities. In order to keep it calm and curb its destructive tendencies, every now and then someone has to dive down into the trench and feed it. No one's exactly lining up for the gig. Each time you start a game, there's a nice world-building cutscene of your character diving down to the station. There's a different expository discussion each time between your character and the boss, and it gives a little bit more info about this world. I'm not sure how many different discussion scenarios there are, but I've played through several times and haven't seen the same conversation yet. You pick your mission, which allows for different quests and difficulties, and you dive down to a procedurally generated set of underwater caves that you can traverse. You're fighting against oxygen, light, drag weight, as well as the creepy denizens of the deep. There's treasure around that you can collect and use that to upgrade your gear, allowing bigger oxygen tanks, faster swimming speeds, Stronger drag power. Uh, not what I was meaning. As well as letting you purchase items to help. Flares, glow sticks, extra tanks, guidelines, keys, etc. It all works and it's pretty easy to dive into. The caverns are different each time and the stepped objectives will change with each expedition. It's pretty fun mapping it all out and then buying dynamite to blow a bloody great hole to wherever you need to go. I found the smaller laser squids not much of a hassle to deal with. I always seemed to have enough flares on hand to shoot at them, and the things growing out of the walls were pretty easy to avoid as well. I played the easiest mode first and completed that, and moved on to the medium mode. Once that was finished, I started the game on hard mode and enjoyed the extra challenge that it offered. Each round has taken me about 30 minutes to an hour to finish, depending on a bit of luck. I have noticed the odd bug. Sometimes when I'm in the shop and buy more than one item, say a chest and a key, only the chest shows up and the key is missing. Likewise with other transactions, if I buy three items, some might be missing as well. It's kind of forced me to purchase one item at a time in the shop, which is a bit irritating. Not a huge deal breaker. The cartoon style is easy to visually digest and movement feels pretty good. When you've got too many spoils dragging behind you, you definitely feel the slowdown effect. The, the big effect down here is probably the lighting. It gives a nice environmental decoration. In the nearest water, it's dark with a hint of light from the deep water observatory. As we get deeper and deeper though, things turn pitch black. The first thing I've been upgrading is the light cone from my suit because it shines further and wider with upgrades and can much more easily warn you of upcoming dangers that you'll need to avoid. There's different discoveries to be made in the deep, like passages to different caves with varying spoils. Ultimately though, you're searching for the chum, the gristle that will entice the squid monster to feed and thus calm its mass murder tendencies, like placating the Minotaur with a virgin sacrifice. The one issue I did have was I got through most of the different game scenarios maybe a bit too quickly. There could be a bit more content, maybe different goals, challenges, etc. But then I suppose the roguelike nature of the game offers a lot of replayability. Now the sound is pretty standard fare of platformer dings and Darth Vader breathing noises underwater. It did enough to strike the right atmosphere for me. The music is a blend of cute ditties that are reminiscent of a retro style of game, and then some pretty cool lo-fi chill tracks. Check this out though, the music fades out as you get deeper into the dark. Like it's all fun when you're in the lit up base, but as soon as the light fades, so does the music. All that's left are the shadows and a sense of fear and loneliness. Loved it. It's overall a pretty basic game, good for a distraction, and I had enough fun playing through the different scenarios that I felt I got my money's worth. Luke also has a YouTube channel of his trials developing the game. He has some pretty interesting videos on game development as a whole, so I'd strongly recommend you check him out. Link to his channel's in the description. Feed the Deep is 10 bucks, and a fun roguelike palette cleanser that I had a really good time with, despite feeling Maybe there could be slightly more levels added. Maybe there's room for a DLC.